earth will be covered in injustice and in wars and in battles. And you see that today, mankind is becoming more and more um, unstable and unhappy and miserable and in difficulty and in turmoil. And when the earth is covered with injustice as it is going towards that direction, the Prophet ﷺ gives us the glad tidings of a righteous ruler who will come. A lot of the scholars agree that the first of the major signs will be the Mahdi. Al Mahdi, literally in Arabic, Al Mahdi means in English the awaited one and the anointed one. So the chosen awaited one. The Prophet ﷺ says he will fill the earth up with justice and peace as it was filled with oppression and wrong. And with regards to this ruler, a thousand and fifty ahadith have been narrated, of which four are sahih. His name is Muhammad. You find this hadith in Sahih Muslim. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says his name is like my name and his father's name is like my father's name. So his name is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. And he resembles the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not in his physical form but in his character. Allah said about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You, O Muhammad, are on an amazing character. This is Allah witnessing to this. So his character is, is perfect. This man, Al-Mahdi, will resemble the character of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is part of the beliefs of the Ahlul Sunnah, that a person will come who will be from the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ. The Rasul says, Al-Mahdi min itrati min waladi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my lineage, as in from my progeny, from the children of Fatima. And he said, he will rule and lead the Muslims until he transforms the world. He will fill it with justice and peace as it was filled with injustice and tyranny. So how many years did it take for the world to be in this terror and tyranny now? Al-Mahdi in only a little while, in a short span of time, by the help of Allah, with his knowledge and with his ability, will change this state of the whole world from injustice to justice, from tyranny to peace, just as it was filled the other way. So every, the balances will be returned. Ali radiallahu anhu says, Al-Mahdi minna ahl al-bayt. The Mahdi is from us, from the family of the Prophet. Yuslihuhu Allahu fi layla. Allah Rabbul Izza will prepare him for the office of leadership in one night. So the Mahdi doesn't know he is the Mahdi. In one night Allah will transform him. The Ahadith mention that a king will die in the Arab Peninsula. And the sons of a king will fight and quarrel over leadership. And to avoid the quarrel, this man, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, will leave Medina in secret and go to Mecca. Because he doesn't want to be involved in the conflict, nor does he want people to turn towards him. So when he goes to Mecca, his aim is to avoid getting tangled up in this leadership struggle. Yet people follow him from Medina into Mecca. And they find him and they take him out. And they bring him to the Kaaba. And there they will make bay'ah to him when he doesn't want it. And as soon as they have pledged allegiance, two things will happen. Number one, an army will march out from Syria to attack this progeny of the Rasul. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen carefully, is in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And he is asleep. And in his sleep, he starts to move. He looks uncomfortable. He's displaying what he's never displayed before. Discomfort and sleep to the extent that he's moving. Then he got up. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have seen you do what you normally do not do. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, strange 
is the situation. An army will come from, the, from Syria, from my ummah, seeking a man from my progeny to attack him. So the first people in Mahdi will fight are Arabs who are under the banner of Islam, but they've erred, gone wrong. As they are approaching, a group of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the earth swallow them. They all die. One person or a couple of people will be left just to tell the tale. So when this happens, realize that this is the one. And the people that realize it initially or the first batch that go towards him, the black flags will rise from the areas of Afghanistan and the flags will come towards him and they will traverse through the land until they come in help of the Mahdi. The other signs of Al Mahdi, Rasul said, he will turn and fight an army that will also prepare an army against him in Al Furs, Bilad Al Furs in Persia. Persia those days, today is known as Iran. Whether it will still be Iran that time or not, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But Al Rasul told us in the Sahih Muslim that they will be an army from Al Furs, will also prepare themselves to fight Al Mahdi. He said he also wipes them off, meaning he destroys them. They have no more power, he disarms them, they no longer have any authority or ability. That's the second army, that's the second sign. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. The Muslims will come and the other side, its opposition will come to face it. And the opposition is so huge. 80 banners, 80 different flags, and each flag will be 14,000 men. He says this whole batch will fight. He goes, La tara He called it Al-Malhamatul Kubra. The Prophet called it Al-Malhamatul Kubra. And a lot of the scholars say Al-Mahdi will be leading this. Al-Malhamatul Kubra, the gigantic war, the gigantic combat. وحتى لا ترى الطائر الذي يطير على على لا ترى الطائر يقع من السماء من شدة الحرب. You will see the flying object or the birds or whatever is flying on the outskirts of this war. It's got nothing to do with the war. It will drop from the sky. It will drop. And if some scholars look at it, and you can probably analyze it as being atomical warfare. Gases that make birds and objects in the sky fall. This is the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And when the two sides meet, and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Because running away, reduces and destroys the morale of everyone standing. So then the campaign starts and the battle is hot in its intense and a third of the Muslims will die and a third will be victorious. Just a third will be victorious and they will be there on the battlefield collecting the remnants and the booty of war. And the hadith says, from one tribe, 99 have died and one person is left. If a family had a hundred members in it, for example, there will only be one of them alive. The rest are all dead. He says, فَبِأَيِّ غَنِيمَةٍ يُفْرَحْ He goes, on that day, Muslims will not rejoice over any booty. Because what mirath is there going to be? He said, what inheritance can be given out? The families are all dead. The majority of people are dead. That's how fierce it is. He was saying like if a family had a hundred, one of them will remain living. So why will he be happy? And what kind of inheritance is he going to look forward to giving? So the whole world has gone out of our hearts. That's what it means. There's no more clinging to the dunya at all. The only thing you look for is to the hereafter. You want to meet your family in the hereafter. That's all it really is. And it's unfortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to take out forcefully this world from our hearts. The love of this world, yani, the materialism, as it has crept into our hearts today, a lot of the people. So you would think after such a calamity, after such a colossal engagement, or what is referred to 
in the books that preceded us as Armageddon, as they have just become victorious and are collecting the things of the battlefield, a voice will come out to them that, O oh Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your lands. Go back to your family and your homes quickly, for a Dajjal has appeared. A Dajjal, commonly known as Antichrist in the Bible, and the first of the Alamatul Kubra, the first of the major signs is the advent of the Dajjal or the Antichrist. So the Imam Al Mahdi will send 10 people, 10 riders, to go and investigate and scout, see if the news is correct. And the Rasul says, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. I know their names and I know the names of their fathers and I know the color of their horses. They will be the best riders of the day. So they will go and see the calamity has come. The Dajjal has come. Who is this Dajjal? The first of the big signs of Qiyamah. And understand when the signs, the major signs are unleashed, they will follow each other like beads on a necklace.